Hey, welcome to another Flights with Joel. This is Joel, or Jolie Schmoly on Instagram, but my Instagram has nothing to do with flight. This video is how I learned to hover in a flight simulator. Uh, this is, I just thought I would do this quick introduction to talk about this video. I'm going to try to show some techniques that I was taught a long, long time ago. And I don't remember if I learned them at Hover Control, which is no longer around, or if I read about them in the forums, but I know they worked. And I know a lot of people are struggling with hovering. So it took me a long time to decide which helicopters to use and which simulator to use. So I decided to use a Huey and an R66. And uh, I'm just starting here because I think this is beautiful scenery. This is Prepare 3D V5, which I'm going to start in. Start in this simulator. I'm going to start at Monterey. And I'm going to impart the little bit of wisdom I have about hovering because if you can't hover a helicopter you can it'll you can do this stuff but it'll be hard to get up in the air to do this and it'll be very difficult to get back out of the air to do this without the hover you have to hover to take off and even if it's only for a moment you have to hover to land now in the real world we have instructors to teach us this stuff and so it is much much easier But in the simulator world, a lot of times we're trying to learn it all on our own. I see a lot of people struggling with that, and a lot of people joining in on the simulator flight, helicopter flight. Seems like more and more people are, are trying it every day. So I'm gonna use both this simulator and X-Plane, which has much more realistic flight models. Even though when I went to do this video, I realized the flight models in here are better than I thought. So, let's get started. So I'm gonna start here in the Melviz UH-1 because it's one of the most realistic flight models I could find that I that I own. There's not a lot of good models since the Dodo Sim disappeared a few versions ago. But this actually has a lot of the characteristics that are that work for starting out and you have a big advantage in prepare 3D because it is an easier flight model. So right now I'm pointing to this torque gauge because I'm going to watch this torque gauge Here's, and I'm going to pay attention to where I lift off initially. I assume you've already done some research. You've got your controls set up. You really should have pedals. It's pretty essential if you're going to fly helicopters. Uh, my controller is a simple and very old SciTech with a loosened spring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see just where this helicopter lifts off, just how much torque it takes. I also lined up right on the numbers for reference. So this gives me more visual clues for when I'm in the hover. Now, in this helicopter, you do have to use right pedal. I wish you could see the animation is not so good. Can't really see how much right pedal I'm using. It's not a lot, but it does take some. So, now I know, I've looked at my torque gauge and I know where it's gonna take off. And I'm actually gonna start practicing the hover just below that. 
just below takeoff power. I'm going to get light on the skids, and I'm going to scoot around, and I'm going to get a real feel for the helicopter without going into the hover. So I'm going to take a lot of the pressure off. So I'm just moving forward on the skids, sliding forward a little bit, and then sliding. Now this is hard. you got to get light enough so it'll slide. Also, this helicopter will slide. Not everyone will. So you got to check that out. Don't be too hard on yourself. If you tip it over and crash, then just try again. My, I'm using very small movements. Very small movements. Just moving around on the pavement. This gives me a real feel for what it's going to take to move this. Then I pick it up. And this is after I've practiced practice sliding for a while. Then come off the ground. And this is really if you've never hovered before. But if you have hovered, get off the ground and realize you're going to drift. So what you're really trying to do is you're trying to balance on a basketball and control the drift. It's not going to be rock, st rock solid for a while. You're going to drift a little bit. My hover still drifts. I've been doing this a long, long time in a flight simulator. Not a professional pilot. Not even a professional flight simulator, which there are plenty of now. So the main thing is small movements and control the drift. It's really all you're trying to do. The more you control that drift, the more you're going to be able to be successful at this. Now from the outside, this is the replay. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you just how much I moved around, just how that hover looked, how the whole process looked. There's a tower view. So here it is, just getting light on the skids and not putting in enough right pedal. There it is. There's the right pedal. I come up. I move back just a little. Then I get off, I take enough power, put enough power in just so it'll slide. So it's light on the skids and I'm going to slide around. Now unfortunately, in the flight sim it's the first thing you have to learn. In actual lessons, it's one of the last things you'll learn. You'll do normal flight, then you'll do approach, and you'll do some slower flight, some taxiing, then you'll learn to hover. But in a flight simulator, without learning to hover, you're going to have a really hard time. So all those other things I mentioned are extremely easy. So there you go. I'm just sliding around. Nice and simple. Just sliding the aircraft around. And you'll see when I get into a hover, it's actually moving around less than it looked like from inside. It just drifts a little bit. That's not bad. I'm staying right on the numbers. I do need a little bit more right pedal to keep it straight. If you want to help yourself even more, put five knots of wind on the nose. That's a big tip too for hover training and auto rotation training. Put five to ten knots of wind right on your nose. It helps a lot. I didn't do that here. There's no wind at all. And this is the R66 turbine in X-Plane. I'm going to use this. I'm actually at the same airport, Monterey, without the orbit scenery. I forgot to say, but you can see in the description, the P3D version has orbit scenery. This is X-Plane with almost no mods, except the R66. And I have the track IR on, so because I find X plane harder to use without track IR, even harder than P3D. So I'm going to do the same exercise, checking my surroundings, seeing what I got. 
Okay, so first we're going to see how much power it takes just to lift off, just to get into the hover. Take my sunglasses off. I think I prefer it without the sunglasses. Looking down runway 28 at the airport actually next to runway. Now here, it's still hard to see, but a lot more right, a lot more pedal needed. And this is a much more realistic um, hover experience. So this is way more difficult. My movements have to be very small, very precise. Um, but I'm just controlling the drift and uh, I'm looking at the power it takes just to get into a hover. There we go. So I know what that is. That was about uh, 50, about 51, 52 percent torque. So now I'm going to go just below that and see if I can slide around in the R66 turbine, which I find to be uh, one of my favorite helicopters now. Here we go. So it does work. I'm just at 50%. Get light on the skids. It works even better because these skids slide a lot easier because this is designed more like the real thing. There you can see how much pedal I have in. Sliding to the side and this is it's tougher not to tip over so don't go too far. You just release to stop. You don't have to go back the other way. You just have to kind of release the pressure to stop the slide. And we'll slide backwards a little ways and try not to get a tail strike. It's working. It's working great. Now we're going to lift up. We're going to have, there we go, and we're going to con just control the drift. That's what I'm trying to do. And you have to anticipate. Hardest thing about the simulator is there's no seat of the pants feel. I've spent a few minutes in actual R22. It's a whole different experience. I found it much easier than the simulator uh, because you can feel everything. Without the seat of the pants, uh, it's very difficult. So there you go. You'll get it. Just control the drift. Control the drift. And if you get the hover down, every other part of your helicopter experience in the simulator will be much easier. And once you learn to hover, all of the helicopters in all the different simulators, then uh, when there's a zombie apocalypse and you suddenly have to escape by helicopter, you'll be able to fly it. Don't you believe it. But uh, as long as there's no one else now, in this helicopter, you just release the pressure on the right pedal, on the left pedal, I'm sorry, and you get a nice right pedal turn in a realistic helicopter. And you put the pressure back in and you stop it, and then a little pressure on the left, and you'll bring it. Now, in a hover and in every situation in a helicopter, whenever you use one type of control, whenever you make an adjustment on one control, you have to make an adjustment on the others. So just remember, whenever you make a change in a helicopter to the pedals, you're going to have to make a change to the cyclic and collective, and those changes are very small. Anytime you put a little more right pedal in, you'll have to you'll have to compensate with the cyclic and some to, and probably the collective, but it's very small changes. Such a great looking little helicopter. Now a replay of me picking it up into a hover. We'll see what this actually looked like. It was pretty good because I'm still beginner in the R66. So. Oh, here I am sliding forward. Now we're just slide to the side a little bit. 
you can hear the skids in this, so that's fun. This is not how to learn in a real world helicopter because you don't want to be scraping up your skids. Slide back. And if you did it in the grass, they might stick when you go to the side and uh, that would not be good. So that is a pretty decent hover. It's a little bit low. We might want to be a little bit higher. I actually dropped it back to the ground. Now I figured it out. And when you're practicing pedal turns, they don't have to be fast. Keep them slow. Keep it controlled. This will teach you how to compensate. Nice and easy. You'll see plenty of YouTube videos where people are doing super fast pedal turns. That's because they're stunt pilots. And they've been doing it a long time. But that's, you want to keep your pedal turns about like that. And once you get that, you'll do 360 turns. And you'll move it sideways, side to side. This is just the very beginning steps of learning to hover. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching. This has been another Flights with Joel. How I learned to hover in a flight simulator. Hope it helps.